So starting with the concept sketch, I knew almost immediately after I had done it that I wanted it to represent a homunculus. I've been experimenting a lot with bodies and distortion and incorporating teeth. Um, this might have like an underlying meaning for me, but for me it really reminded me of a book I'd read called, um, I can't, what is it? Creatures of uh, Will and Temper? I almost said Want and Druin, but that's a different book. I got this book just because of the cover art, which you should never do. Choosing a book based off the cover art, it's bound to go awry. But with this, I was actually pleasantly surprised because the subject matter is kind of dark and macabre. And that's kind of my favorite thing to read about, as it turns out. And that kind of fits in with October, at least now. I didn't read it in October. I don't actually remember when I read it, if I read it this year or last year. I bought it through thrift books, so buying it just based off the cover when it was only like 4 or $5 didn't seem like a bad idea. I also bought another one that's kind of like, it's not a series, but it's connected. I haven't read it. I've tried to read it. It's not, it was hard to get into. Even I don't know. I don't know. But the book, Creatures of uh, Will and Temper, it it explores, is it Will and Temper or is it Want and Ruin? I don't know. I'll show it. I can't remember anything. I have a horrible memory. Um, it talks about basically diabolicists and how they use things, ver like various like ingredients to commune with demons. And it features homunculus creatures. So this is kind of in my mind uh, what a homunculus could look like in this world. Because I know there's like the full metal alchemist homunculus and then there's like just like the um alchemical homunculus creatures that are like their hands and feet and everything are kind of like really big and distorted so either way it, it goes back to it representing a homunculus um but also it kind of made me think like i got very excited when going back to how my interests are like dark it was like what if this is like my cursed painting like haunted painting um I don't know if you're like there's a genre of like paranormal investigators who like encounter possessions that are haunted or possessed you know kind of like um the Annabelle dolls for me I was like what if this painting like, I don't know what would attach to it, but something. I mean, it's kind of weird. I think my last three paintings, I've kind of felt like could be homunculus-like. But with this one, I feel like the homunculus qualities are more pronounced and undeniable. The fact that this, this video aligns with October is just convenient. Um... So I kind of talked myself in a circle and I don't remember what it was that I wanted to say. But talking about October, I also want to talk about, since we're talking about like demons and darkness in October, Interview with a Vampire, the TV show. I'm a reader. I prefer reading to watching things. And the TV series really hurts me so much. As a person of color, I don't think that Louie needed to be made a person of color. And I don't know, I, I've only watched the first two episodes. I think that third episode comes on tomorrow because it comes on on Sundays. And it just, it, it's turned into something that it was not in the book. Like he was not, it's turned into like a white savior. And that's like a part of the power dynamic between the two of them. And that's never what it was in the book. They've only really stayed true to Lestat's storyline. But even then, he never interacted with, with Louis' family. Louis, Louis' brother didn't die that way. I know it just, it really pains me in a lot of like book to film or TV show adaptions, the things that they change. And this change is just not for the better because they've also been like using racism in the N word. And it's just like, this is not what I want. And I, it's just crazy because I kind of, I got a back tattoo that incorporated part of, part of the scene from the movie. I can't show it on the screen or anything, but it's the part where Louis and Claudia meet Armand and it was just like oh it was 
it was beautiful and gothic and like so dark and I mean it was a little bit horrifying but it was also like sensual but it was like it, it was it was perfect it was like peak gothic horror only maybe second to Dracula which I really don't like Dracula as a book or the movie but the movie with Renona Ryder Renona Ryder and um Keanu Reeves that that also I don't know like I feel like women the women the wives of Dracula in that movie were just they were so beautiful and ugh, it just really made that if you go off the fact that Nosferatu is technically plagiarized Dracula I don't know Dracula was really obsessed with like female purity and like Christianity I'm not Christian I I, I don't feel anything when I see it this is all over the place I just didn't care for it. it was like oh he told and I told her in that book so many times like you're really smart for woman and this is actually I didn't read Dracula I had to I had to watch the I had to listen to the audiobook because I reading it was very boring like once you get past the um the part where he's on the, I don't know, wagon? It's a wagon? Where he's, where that woman in Romania says something like the dead, the, the, no, it's the man. It's the man who drives, like, the wagon or the coach thing he's in. And he's like, the dead travel fast or for the dead travel fast. That's, like, the peak of that book for me. Like, oh, <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> Quotable. Perfect. The rest of that book, I don't care for. I was really rooting for Dracula. I would have been out that window. Like, really. They were annoying. Those men were so annoying. Like, you only get to tell me I'm smart for a woman so many times before I lose it. I think most women would have been out that window. This is a, um... Back to the painting. <laughs> back to the painting. Um, it pretty much is exactly what I wanted it to be. I did struggle a little bit because I wanted to do, like, a sort of overlay thing that I've done with uh an earlier painting there's a painting i've done called catacomb where i did this like very like interesting thing where i did like an undertone and overtone where it's like the eye is spiraling out is spi spiraling out my enunciation today my blood sugar is low while i was doing this painting my blood sugar was low and i'm doing this voiceover immediately after i've done this painting Oof. I, I really wanted the color balance. I'm kind of low on paint, and I've painted over another painting. Like, this is already over old paint, so that kind of made it hard. If it was a blank canvas, I think the paint would have applied more smoothly, and I wouldn't have struggled so much with, like, I feel like rendering the fingers and the feet was difficult. And then I also kind of had to exhibit a level of uh, self-control, self-restraint to make sure that it turned out properly because like I could have started with the teeth but I couldn't do the teeth immediately because the arms are coming out of the mouth as well and so are the legs technically if you look at it and based on the concept sketch it was it was a bit more clear but I kind of changed it because I need I want there to I wanted there to be a bit more distinction to the onlooker that's something that I've done a lot in my the last two or three years of my art that's kind of why I've gone to, like, only black backgrounds as well. Because my earlier stuff, I don't think people appreciate it. And I'm... I don't think you could appreciate it as an onlooker. I mean, I look at it and I knew what it was, but... I don't know. I'm I, As of lately, I've been, like, striving more for my art to be more consumable or, like, palatable for the masses. But also kind of maintaining my art style. I don't know if I've done that. Uh, I don't want to, like, water myself down. So as I'm maintaining my artistic integrity, this is the style that I've uh, come to settle with for now. Another thing, because I talked about Anne Rice. I don't know why Anne Rice did not sue them for that Queen of the Damned. That is not the adaption that anybody wanted. And I honestly think it was just, it had to have been to catapult Aaliyah's career, because nothing else about that movie made any sense. They didn't follow any sort of plot for you to go from Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise to that man, and that other man, that is, everybody in that movie looked wrong, and they didn't, they, everything about it was wrong, the next book to movie adaption, if you're following the series of Vampire Chronicles, it should have been the Vampire Lestat, and talking about that, my mom was like, you know what, Sierra, you're probably one of the few people who reads the books and watches the shows and series, but I'm like, 
if you're going to adapt something, please do it properly. Like, there's very few series that have been done justice. Like, I can, maybe Narnia, but Narnia didn't have, stand a chance against the Harry Potter franchise. And Harry Potter, they were cranking those movies out, okay? And they really got the budget. But these other things, I'm like, this is atrocious. Atrocious? My blood sugar's low, I'm slurring a little bit. It's absolutely offensive. And I, ugh, I couldn't imagine being, like, one of the writers of, like, one of these books and, like, seeing how they could adapt it. I would lose my mind. I would lose it. If you care about somebody's art, please don't do what you've done. Over, but they keep doing it. They keep doing it. Talking about, oh, oh, so many things come to mind. <laughs> Their eyes are watching God. It is a masterpiece. The book, Zornia Hurston, she really went off. She did her thing. I love it. Beautiful. Movie adaption, it was just a love story. It didn't, it, it, it and Oprah, Oprah, if you've ever seen the movie, Michael Ealy and Holly Berry, they did the best they could. They, it's not their fault. But Oprah really talks that movie up. She took out, they took out everything important about that. The colorism, the, Michael Ealy does not fit the description of tea cake, i.e. vegetable, ugh, vegetable woods. <laughs> vegetable woods. It, it, he, that's not what he, no, he was a dark-skinned person. There was colorism in that book. They didn't, there was, I mean, not that you can really capture Janie's naivete on camera, but it was a major thing in her relationships, is that she just didn't have a good grasp of the world. They didn't, there was, she didn't implement any essence of generational trauma. Um, the fact that her mother, her grandmother was a freed slave. I was like, at the beginning of the book, it's like, literally, Janie didn't even know she was black. Like, she was, just, there was a trial. <sighs> Like, no, like, there was so much, so much left out. I hate, I hate adaptions. Just leave them alone. Respect the art. Don't do it. And that's like, oh, if I hadn't known that there was a, if I hadn't known that the Enola Holmes movie was based off the books, I wouldn't hate it as much as I do, because I watched the movie before I started to read the books, because I was like, that's not, I, I, I'm not really that type of person, but I did it. Ugh, some, ugh, ugh, ugh. It's not following the plot at all, and that author clearly did what she did for a reason. It was probably, in like some essence, as a creator, you do put yourself into part of your work, and the way that, ugh, the way that Millie Bobby Brown, because I'm assuming it's like she's acting in it, that she's also, I think she's also the producer, like has some sort of creative direction control. She's not following the story at all, and I'm like, when I read it, it was so moving to me, especially when I got to the end book. I love Enola. Um, I don't know what she symbolized to the author, Nancy something, I can't remember, but it reminded me of a different book by Rue Friedman called The Disobedient Girl, and I can't talk about it without, like, spoiling it for people, but it was just, like, it really, it's not, what is with these people in romance? You can have a dark, you can, I, I don't know, I mean, I don't like fairy tales and, like, happy endings and stuff, but at the same time, it's like, Reality is not great, and I honestly think the fairy tale, the, the propaganda of fairy tales has really negatively impacted a lot of women. Women into girl, like, girlhood into womanhood, the transitional period has been, it's been harsh, it's been abrupt, it's been painful and traumatic. I think because of the fairy tale lore, which is why I only really co-sign dark fairy tales, the original ones, but also I've kind of written my own or created spins on them. I don't know. I think that's kind of where, like, that weird area where it's like, you can't be an avid reader without, like, most most writers were avid readers. And it's like I started writing things to, like, suit my own fancy. Like, you know what? This is where this person lost me. So I'm going to write it. I'm going to write this for me. I'm not going to blame them. I'm just going to be like, they didn't know better, but I do. I don't think there's anything more to say, but to leave it on a high note, my cat, Hermione, she was born in October, or I got her in October. She was actually born under my neighbor's porch, but I really love kittens. I've raised three litters of, well, three, maybe four and a half. I can't really count. But the half, they were feral, but it wasn't my fault. If my mother would have let me keep the cat, those kittens would have never been feral, but no. But anyway... Here's some footage of the kittens, the litter that she was from. There was three. It was Hermione, Mercutio, Tibble. She's a very crafty cat. Um, 
yeah, she was born in, like, I got her in 2008, I want to say 2008, right? 2008? So, yeah, she's whatever math years old she is now, and then also my other cat, Crookshanks. I didn't name them, by the way, my sister did, because I didn't think I'd get to keep them. And when you name things, you tend to get a cat, uh, a catched, <laughs> get attached to them. And I was like, don't name them. And then I'll flip your spirits because this video was like kind of dark. I talked about demons and homunculuses and vampires. And I, get, I brought up some race stuff. Ugh, I just don't like what they did with that.